bass. Odds are, if you love car audio, you're going to love bass. But there's a problem. Many times during the recording process of music, bass is mixed down or filtered away. Also, many MP3 players are designed to play music through small earphones. So no emphasis is put into the bass range of frequencies that our subwoofers within our car audio system can play. So how can we restore this missing bass and maximize it to its full potential? Audio Control has a solution for this problem with the Epicenter. Hello there, I'm Mark from the YouTube channel Car Audio Fabrication, and I'm here in this video on behalf of Audio Control to show you guys the Epicenter Bass Restoration Processor. Let's jump on in and take a look at this device. Let's take a look at what the Epicenter includes inside the box. So you of course have an instruction manual, the Epicenter itself, the Epicenter Adjustment Knob, and the wire to connect the adjustment knob to the Epicenter. The Epicenter is a bass restoration processor that uses patented technology to accurately recreate and inject bass that has been removed from the audio signal back into the signal path. Now you may be wondering, why is bass ever removed from the audio signal during the music production process anyways? This is done because most audio systems cannot handle true levels of bass, but if we're upgrading our car audio system, we are doing so with quality components that can handle the bass. So we need to restore it. Not only does the epicenter allow us to recreate the missing bass, we can control the center frequency of the bass that is emphasized along with how wide of a range of frequencies are affected. All of this is done while limiting destructive bursts that could potentially damage the speakers. So how do we actually go about installing the epicenter? Well, the goal with the epicenter is that we're gonna place it within the signal path from the source unit to the amplifiers. Something really important to note here is that if you are adding some sort of unit that controls crossovers, you wanna do that after the epicenter. In other words, you would want to go from your outputs to a crossover if you were using it, and then on to your amplifiers. When it comes to determining a location to actually mount the epicenter, you wanna pick a location that it can be mounted permanently, and you wanna be as close to the amplifiers as possible. Making the electrical connections to the epicenter is very easy. We can start with unplugging this plug. With this connector, we'll connect a ground, we'll connect a 12 volt constant that is fused with a one amp fuse, and then we'll connect a remote turn on lead, which would be a switched 12 volt source. With those connections made, we can now plug these in to the device. Here on the input side of the device, we will connect our source unit. The source unit could be an aftermarket head unit, it could be an MP3 player, a phone, anything that will allow us to have an RCA style connection. Now the outputs are what we would connect our RCA style connections to our amplifier. And keep in mind that we could also have a crossover or an equalizer between the epicenter and the amplifier. So on the output side of the epicenter, I've connected this RCA wire, which then goes to a small amplifier. I'm using this to simulate what the amplifier in the vehicle would be like, and that amplifier is thus powering this subwoofer. The final very simple connection to make is to our control dial itself. We can plug in one end, of the wire to the back of this, and we will plug in the other end to the device. The adjustment knob should be mounted in a location that is easy to reach so it can be adjusted, and the design of it also allows for a flush mount style installation into a dash or into another bezel. So now that I have all of the electrical connections made to the epicenter, we can turn it on by activating the remote turn on lead circuit. When the device powers on, we'll get an indicator light on the device itself, as well as the remote control. So I've got the epicenter completely connected. We've got it connected to the amplifier. I'm actually playing a song right now. That's why you'll see this indicator light actually flashing with the pulses of the bass. In order to demo what the epicenter is capable of, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a test song. Now I'm gonna be playing the subwoofer using this small amplifier. It's only about 10 watts RMS of power that will be going to this. When I first start playing the song, I'm gonna have the epicenter control turned all the way down. And you're going to see that although this song is meant to have a nice bass track, it's actually been removed. As I turn up the epicenter control, you'll be able to actually hear and see that the bass is being restored. What 
what's really important to understand about the epicenter is the epicenter isn't simply just boosting a bass frequency. What it's actually doing is it's detecting harmonic information for a particular bass note. When it detects this information, it can then restore that particular bass note back into our musical signal. Now a few notes about setting up this device, you have the para-bass controls here. The sweep control here on the right side allows you to dial in the particular frequency that you want to be emphasized by the epicenter. The wide adjustment dial allows us to control how wide of a bandwidth around that center frequency we're going to maximize. Now inside the device, there are a couple of other settings that we can actually control, but these settings are more for an advanced system design. The first of these advanced settings is an input grounding selection where we can choose between balanced or unbalanced RCA style connections. If you find that you're experiencing alternator whine with this device, there's also a ground isolation jumper that you can adjust. Finally, there's a base output control jumper that allows us to increase or decrease the signal voltage of the base restoration circuit. So next time you wanna make sure that your base performs to its optimal capability, make sure you consider Audio Control's Epicenter base restoration processor. If you would like to purchase the Epicenter or learn more about the device, you can do so by clicking the links down in the video description. For more Audio Control videos, be sure to check out the rest of this channel here on YouTube. Thank you everyone for watching.